Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get set up to run Python in Windows. Now, if you're running Mac OS, uh, then you still can follow along and probably do all of this, just changing you know, some of the things a little bit to do it the Mac way. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask your instructor. Um, but I'm in Windows 11 here, and the first thing I'm going to do is go to python.org and download it. So I'm going to go to downloads here and uh, just go ahead and click download Python. And if you're on Mac, it'll it'll automatically go to um, the Mac version or you can select here and do that as well. I've already done that, but I haven't installed it yet. So I'm going to go to the downloads here and click on the executable that it gave me. And one thing that I want to make sure I do is click this checkbox here, add python.exe to the path. Um, and then I'm going to click install now. And that should just take a second uh, to set up. Or maybe just a minute to set up. Now you have Python installed and we're pretty much ready to go. So I can just hit close here. And um, what I'm going to do is just show you without any text edit or anything, um, you can right click on the start menu here on the start icon and uh, go to the PowerShell. And uh, this is the command prompt uh, or a command prompt that we can utilize. Um, and some of the stuff on the screen might show up a little bit different for you. Uh, but I can type in here Python and um, dash capital V. And you should be able to see your Python versions uh, show up. Now, it's important that you use a capital V there. Also, I can just type Python and not anything afterwards and hit enter. And this is the Python REPL. Um, and so that's a very handy thing where we can just type in uh, commands uh, and it'll read them, evaluate them and display the results. So REPL, R-E-P-L stands for read, evaluate, print, loop. And loop means because it's going to do it again and again just until we're done. So I can, for example, do some math here. I can say three plus five and it outputs eight on the screen there. Uh, just a really simple thing. I, also, I can say print and then in single quotes here, hello, and it displays hello. And then if you want to exit out of the REPL, uh, you can do quit with parentheses. Um, that exits out back to the command prompt, um, and then I can run Python again to get back into it. Now, typically, um, you don't want to write all your commands every time in the command line. You want to be able to uh, save your work and then run it all um, again. Uh, and so often we'll use a text editor to do that. So I'm just going to exit out of this for now um, and go to the second tab here. Um, I recommend uh, downloading, installing Visual Studio Code. You can use any text editor, but um, this is the one I would recommend. So if you go to code.visualstudio.com, you'll get this window. Um, and again, if you're on a Mac, it'll show you the, the download for um, the Windows version, uh, but you can just click download there and it'll go ahead and download it. Now, I've already, um, once again, I've already downloaded it. Um, so I'm just gonna click on the one I previously downloaded uh, just for the sake of time. And we'll go ahead and accept the license agreement and click next. And uh, this path will look a little different for you, but that's fine. Uh, you can click next. Um, and uh, if you uh, want to, you can say don't click start menu folder, but I, I recommend doing that. Um, and then once again, we we'll want to make sure this last one is clicked add to path here. Um, and then require shell restart. That's fine. Um, you can check any of these other ones you want to if you want extra helpful links to like uh, right click and be able to say, oh, yeah, open this in Visual Studio Code, feel free or add a desktop item if you want to do that. Uh, but you don't have to. Uh, that's totally up to you. Click install and we'll just let it do the installation really quickly. All right, so when that's finished, we can click launch Visual Studio Code. Uh, leave that checked if you'd like and uh, it'll go ahead and open up. And the first time you open it, uh, you won't see this message down here. That's just because how I'm running it. But you should see some kind of welcome screen like this. And you can change how it looks, you know, if you if for light mode versus dark mode. Um, there's also other themes that you can customize. Um, but we can go ahead and exit out of that. Um, uh, we don't need it uh, right away. And also, now that we have it open, I'm just going to exit out of it here. Uh, you can go down to the start menu and uh, you can search uh, Visual Studio. Or I just typed in V, but you can see that it, oops, you can see that it just started showing up. Visual Studio Code. You might want to right click on that and click uh, pin to start or pin to taskbar. Either way, if I do pin to start, um, then it'll always show up right here, you know, in this list um, and I can easily open it. Um, and this is a text editor uh, that provides um, a lot of other helpful features uh, for programming in various languages. Uh, once again, you won't see this message down here. I'm going to exit out the welcome here and then um, on the left hand side, there's this button here for extensions. So I'm going to click on that 
and um, I'm going to search for the Python extension. Um, notice that right now is the, the top one. So I could just click on here, the Python extension by Microsoft. But if you don't see that on the list, just type Python up here um, and uh, it should show up again. You'll want the one by Microsoft. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on install here and uh, that'll take another minute to set up and then we'll be ready to go with Python inside of Visual Studio Code to allow us to edit uh, files and then run them in Python. So that's now been installed and um, I can go ahead and click on this again to, to hide it. Um, and now I'm ready to, um, to run Python inside of here. Now, um, what I want to do is open a folder. So I'm going to say open um, folder here under file. So file uh, folder. And uh, you can decide where you want to put your code for this class. I recommend putting it all in one place. Uh, you could put it in documents and maybe create a new folder here. Um, CSCI 217. For example and then um, maybe a new folder in here for week one keep your stuff organized it's much better um, if you have your stuff uh, in in or organized folders where you can easily reach it um, so once i'm in here i'm going to click in um, select folder and uh, you'll notice here now on the left hand side um, it says week one that's the folder i'm currently in if this pops up i would just say uh, yeah trust the, the author of these files you're going to be writing these code this uh, python code so you can trust yourself um, and you can click yes yes i trust the author that lets us do more more things uh, as we're running through um, in visual studio code it'll do more with uh, the things because it won't have to worry about you know did you write did you are you running somebody's malicious code on your computer um, anyways um, so now we can go ahead and click new file if you still have the welcome thing here um, or if you're hovering over the week one here you can click on this plus button to add a new file um, or we can go to file and then new text file any of those options will work i'm going to click here um, and i'm going to type in uh, the name of the file i'm going to type in hello.py it's important that you end your files with .py because that says it's a python file and then if you click enter or um, click away then you'll see the file show up here if i exit out of it i can just click on it again and there it shows up again and now you can type in python code so once again we could do print um, let's do hello world the classic uh, first thing to, to print notice here there's a circle over the exit button here that means it's unsaved uh, and so i need to make sure i save it uh, you can go to file save or what i usually do is type in the shortcut here Control s or on mac it's command s um, and now it's saved and we could run this we could type as many uh, python instructions as we want and then run it now there's different ways to run it um, but one easy way now is to just click this play button here on the left hand side so if i click that notice it says run python file So if I click pay, pie, uh, if I click play, uh, then this pops up down here um, and it runs uh, and you can see it displays hello world here. Um, so it opens up the terminal here in whatever the default terminal is and runs it. Um, and uh, you can see the whole command it ran here. Uh, so this is the whole path to my Python install. Um, and then here's the whole path to uh, my Python file that I just wrote, the hello.py. Now we can write something simpler. So you can also run it by just typing like we did in the command line, Python, and then the name of the file. So I can say hello.py here um, and that'll run. And the reason that works is because I made sure to check, check that box that says add to path uh, when I was installing Python. Um, another thing that we can do is add more to this file. So I can say print um, hello class. And uh, then if I try to run it again, so if I click this play button here, Um, it'll just run it down below and notice it automatically saved it for me. Notice the circle went away. Um, and so you want to make sure that happens. That's a nice feature that'll do that automatically. Um, and so it's a really easy way to set up and, and run code. One other thing I want to mention is oftentimes we'll uh, add comments to our code. Um, so it's a good idea to at the top of your files to add a comment and then for different lines to explain what they're doing. Uh, so I'm just going to add here uh, displays a welcome message to the user to the user. And if you wanted to, you could put your name here um, as well. That's kind of nice. Uh, every Everything that starts with a pound in Python is a comment, which means that uh, it's not interpreted. It doesn't run any instructions. It's just for you to remember what the code does or whoever reads your code. Uh, once again, it's not saved. So I'm just going to do control S or, you know, you could go to file save or run it again. You know, if you run it down here and I can exit out of this uh, command line, uh, the terminal here by clicking this exit button. Um, and if I ever wanted to show it back up again, obviously I could run it again and it'll pop up. Notice it's got the same, same, my old, old history here uh, when I do that. Also, I could do, uh, click these dots here or it might show up depending on if you're not zoomed in. I can click new terminal if I want to uh, start fresh. Um, or 
you know, one other thing you, I can show you is if you hit play here um, and you click the delete button here, that will uh, kill the terminal. Uh, and then when I run it again, notice it's a fresh terminal uh, when it pops up and runs. Uh, so it doesn't have my old stuff listed there. Um, once again, we can also type Python here and run in the REPL. Uh, so then I can do, you know, like the math I was doing, uh, maybe a little bit more complicated and see the results of that or print stuff. And uh, as you get into the class, you'll see more advanced things uh, that we can do there. Once again, I can hit quit uh, with parentheses to take uh, that back to the regular command line. Hope this is useful uh, and uh, feel free to talk to your instructor if you have any questions.